Uh, I was, I kind of, while you guys were eating lunch, I did a little forensic on your uh, golf bag there. Okay. Just kind of measured lie length, loft, and stuff. They're kind of, they're a little all interesting. The yeah, a little all over the place. Okay. <laughs> What are we, are we doing seven iron? We'll start with your seven. I want to see you hit your seven, and I want to see you hit your five. Oh my God. Nice. So job number one in fitting for me starts right here. It's in ball speed. I don't care how fast it is. I don't care how slow it is. I just want it to be the same. What I call flatlining your ball speed. Because um, we know flatline ball speeds go flatline distances, right? Mm -hmm. So when you see your ball speed, you know, 28, 27, 30, 25, 24, it's a little bouncy. It's not bad. Right? My goal is always to get players between one and two, what I call club level golfers. So you're coming in at two, but we try to make you better every time you come here. Does that make sense? Yep. Job number two in fitting for me starts he is here. It's land angle. Right? It's not how the ball launches, how it comes into the earth. We want to steep it in that. I mean, your good ones are good. 51, 49, 47. You know, it's really hard to make good shots better. Right? I'm kind of go going after your bad shots today to right. make those better. Let's attack those. That's how you play better golf. Okay. Right? Is to turn these doubles into pars. Mm -hmm. Right? And then land angle is a good term for for people like you and me and, you know, who are in the know what it means. But land angle is tough to relate to a consumer because you can't see it. Right? Land angle happens over there. The only way you can see land angle is if you're on the side or you're out there trying to catch it for the most part. What you see as a golfer is this number. It's your apex. Okay. Yeah. How high is a golf ball go, right? For the most part, you want guys to be able to plug and play so their nine iron swing doesn't feel any different than the four iron swing. Yeah. They're not trying to do anything at impact. Yeah. You just want to set it up so that they get a rock. For me, every club in your bag should separate by five miles an hour of ball speed. Okay. And this That's is where rule. this is where you're okay because your seven iron, 127. Your your five iron, 136 and a half. It's pretty darn close, mm -hmm. right? It's almost 10. Your land angle should match or be close to matching. PGA Tour average on a seven iron is 50 degrees land angle. PGA Tour average on a four iron is 48. So we're actually saying this. This is oh, good. That's, that's good. This is bad. I was looking at the five. Right? Yeah. So if you're seven iron, let's even be fair. I'm a nice guy. It's so funny because mentally I'm like, I'm working so hard to keep the ball down. Yeah. Whereas it's like, I'm going too low. Actually. Well, you hit it high enough. It just doesn't have enough spin on it, which is why it kind of falls out of the air a little flat. Okay. Right? Any club in your bag that you hit into a green, we call it a scoring club. And in order for it to be a scoring club, it has to be north of 45 degrees. That's great to know. Yeah. And look at your seven iron, 48.2. So what should your five iron be? A little bit higher. A little bit higher, yeah. right? And you kind of ease off on the knockdown. <laughs> look at your apexes. Now when you hit a good seven iron, you're at 106, 118. Let's call your apex 106 feet. Mm -hmm. How high should Andrew Tursky's five iron be? 106 feet. How high is it? Not 92 feet. Yeah. So I'm excited to show you the new line. Um, we're pretty excited, excited about it. So T100, T150, T200, T350, CB, MB stayed the same. Especially excited. I know, I know. So your seven iron, you're walking in here at 31 degrees loft. All right, so it's strong, which is probably yeah, contributing to the, the low spin that you have, mm -hmm. right? Um, 34, 32, 30 and a half, 29. I'm gonna start you here. I always like to start people in the middle. And then when I fit players, I always say this too, I'm always trying to fit them as far as I can this way in the line. Just, I mean, if you start here, okay. I'm just pointing yeah, this yeah, way. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the area I want to go. So less forgiving? Well, no, I mean less forgiving, just more loft, because then when I need help, when I need help in the five iron or the four iron, when I need to make the head bigger, I have tools to grab. If I make your seven iron here for distance, but when we get down to the five iron, where are you going to have? You're going to have a bunch of head covers, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to start you right in the middle. Oh, God. Oh, boy. How's it feel? There we go. So I think part of your left miss 
Andrew, comes into the fact that your plane, if the golf ball was a plane, doesn't have enough spin on it, right? So you're, when you, you know, have you ever held your hand at a car of a window, right? Mm -hmm. Hand goes up, ball goes up, right? But hand goes down, ball goes down, right? Mm -hmm. So spin, drag, and lift actually keeps the ball online. I think that low spin shot is what's causing your ball to, to dive left. Different. It's probably more of like my natural ball flight that I'm like fighting against. I mean, yeah, you swing four degrees from the inside. So you don't choose the length based on your height. Because yeah. if that was the case, my clubs would be three inches over, right? <laughs> you choose the length that gives the player the best chance to hit the center of the face. So a good way to test that is deviation of ball speed, right? You pick the length that gives the player the tightest deviation of ball speed. Okay. That means he's hitting it where? The center of the face, right? Mm -hmm. Try this. How's the shaft feel? It's Something you... feels light. Okay. I don't know what it is. Good. But now I want to kind of address that that light feeling that you're saying. Yeah. Right? I'm sure. I don't you... know what it is. Is it like? It's the same shaft. I know. It's weird. Yeah. Now overall weight with your grip, and then when you start adding length, the club usually feels a little heavier, right? I have a. Marty will tell you, I hit, a, I hit a hook too, so I'm always trying to uh, make the club really heavy because I feel like it's harder for me to hook it. Yeah, right? that's how I feel too. I'd rather give up 10 yards, oh. you know. Well, it's because you have 10 yards to spare. <laughs> you exactly. Hit, you hit it so far. I didn't far. mean to sound that way. <laughs> Really good. What do you think of that? Way too high. Okay. You think that's too high? What is it though, actually? That's not, that's uh, 112 feet. That's PGA Tour average, 110. Right? Maybe my brain is just wired wrong. I wish I could hit it as high <laughs> as that. You know, like you know who hits it that high? Tour players. You know, if you want to hit it lower, you hit it lower. If Ron wants to hit it lower, if Scheffler wants to hit it, if Jordan wants to hit it lower, they just they hit it lower. They hit, they take an extra club, they grip down, they play it back in their stance, and they hit a shot in there, right? But this is such an advantage. Are you tell me you'd be a better shot maker? Yes. Well, I'm also telling you, like, this is such an advantage. You don't understand how good that is to be able to hit it that high. You know, going into a tucked pin, going into a front flag on an uphill green. How did this shaft feel? Um, I mean, the weight feels better to me. Yeah. Okay. I've played, obviously, X100. Yeah, I think everyone has at some point in their life. I, the reason I switched to the 6.5s yeah. was because I felt like they were a little more fade bias and can get the ball lower. Okay. Did it work? Yeah. I mean, I'm hitting the next 100 <laughs> way higher. Yeah, that's fair. Right? So, I think I just got to adjust my goals, maybe. Let's try 150. All right. First look at the 150. It looks so similar to the it does. T100. You almost can't tell the difference. Just slightly larger this year. Just a little bit thicker on the top line? Yeah. Feels a lot more solid for Does me. it? Yeah. That's where I think the 150 is going to help is on your low strike miss. See, that's the ball flight I want. I know. <laughs> I guess I'm bugging. So I love that. Like the good one you just hit before was 131 ball speed. Then you hit it thin, and it's yeah. 128 ball speed. 128? Yeah. Okay. I do feel like I could drop this one in a bucket compared to the. T100. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why. Yeah, I think it's just it's like a minor visual change. But slightly larger. I feel a little more comfortable with this one. I also think we're pretty dialed with like the weight. The weight of this feels really good. Nice work. It's the best one I've hit so yeah, far. Yeah, smoked. I love this one. It's good. Even the skinny one, that's what I like to see is when you miss one, but it lands right here, right? 
what I start to look at is what do we do different here? So this is the six five longer than just the T one fifty head, like do yeah, change standard anything? line. Okay. So what I love is look at your golf club, right? So that's where you're hitting the, the golf ball, and that's really because I think your clubs are, are too far flat. <laughs> then we start working up. Let me start seeing stuff get closer to the center. And that's just a lie angle change, moving okay. your strike, right? Um, length stayed the same. So what made you hit it more in the center? It's the line, right? I know you talked about, like, not wanting to hit it left. I mean, T-150 didn't go left. Why is it going left if it's flat? Is it because I'm messing with the impact location? Yeah, exactly. You're hitting it on the toe. Now, there's not as much bulge and roll on, a, on an iron. It doesn't take over as effect, but it's still going to make the ball try to go left. And if I, you're more flat, just in general, if you're more flat, that's what, that's you're going to hit it on the toe more if you're... Uh, I mean, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, and it's more, yeah. It's like the, should flat make it go right? Yeah, sure, but I mean, that's, that's the handbook. I mean, you got to hit it to really test it. So this is new T200. Looks a lot like an AP2 to me. Yeah, a good observation. There you go. That's really good there. So you see the ball speed come be up. tough to tell you all just all over. Yeah, but I mean, look, I think we found your iron, but I yeah. want you to hit everything. You know, this is the benefit of what you see 200 give, which is 133. What I love about it is the spin stays up, right? And actually, the, you don't lose any apex height. They actually, you've gained a little apex height. And that's kind of what we've been seeing, you know, the, you can't make a club stronger and loft if it starts losing your apex or losing your stopping power because then it's no longer a seven iron at that point. It becomes a six iron, it becomes a five iron. So what I love is that you know, Marnie and his team were able to keep the spin and keep the apex and keep the land angle the same, but you get the benefits of the more ball speed. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think your seven iron is going to be T200 because you don't need to hit a seven iron that far, but I think that this might be an option down the line. I will say, compared to last year, they feel and sound a lot better. Yeah, they, the sound and the feel is feel a lot more phenomenal, solid. right? It has like a pretty uniform look. Yeah. I mean, obviously a little thicker, bigger, more offset, but same general shape. One thirty six, one thirty six ball speed. Trampoline off this thing. Uh, one ninety seven carry. <laughs> uh, and guess what? One twenty three apex. Right. So that's yeah. the beauty of it. It's it's twenty nine degrees of loft, but you're hitting it higher. Yeah, it's not just you're hitting it higher, mm -hmm. right? And the land angle is fifty one three. So it's literally where you've lived with your whole with the whole line. I feel like so many amateurs should be playing this club right here. <laughs> yeah, for real. For sure. you, know, you hit one more like that, you might be playing this club. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, you know, proof's kind of in this, right? We actually, we kind of know where we're going to go, Andrew. I just wanted you to I kind know of, where I want to <laughs> go. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. I'll I'm get, just I'll hoping that we match up. No, it's good there. Yeah. I like that. Um, and I think you hit the 6.5 better. Even though you like the the heavier weight of X1, just a pure weight thing. Yeah. So if we can, yeah, 150, no brain. I mean, if we compare it, like this was your PXG. This was your 150. I know which clubs I would want if you're on my team. We're playing Marnie tomorrow. If you're, if you're my opponent, yeah, play your PXGs, right? <laughs> it's like I didn't even need to see this. Though. Yeah, you saw it out Once there. Once I hit it, feel it, see it. Yeah. It just feels more solid. The forgiveness is actually higher, even though it's a smaller, smaller package. Head, yeah. Which is like what I want, really. Yeah. I don't want to play a huge iron. What? I just kind of played it out of necessity. I think when you start making irons bigger, is when you start seeing 
the ball speed get a little inconsistent, right, with some other companies. And you see ours, 32, 30, 31, the ball speed's super tight, deviation super tight. I mean, our deviation on ball speed, you know, was really good on every model we hit with you. I mean, here's T100, right? I mean, deviation's fantastic, right? Not as fast, but 28, 29, 28. And that's when you see the apexes start to be to deviate better. I mean, your deviation on apex was 15 on yours. And every model of ours is, you know, 5, 8, right? And that's just because your ball speed's more consistent. And I will say, it's not like I was really hitting the ball any different. No. Like, even no. with the title of science, I'm still kind of low heel, out on the toe. Yeah. But it brings everything in. It's a little tighter. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you see north south, north south is all really good on all of them. It's tight. Yeah. So now we get in now now we get into the fitting. I think it's really you know, I think seven iron, you know, you can get fit at seven iron a lot of places and I don't think that's really fitting. I think fitting really comes the beauty of fitting for me and what I get excited about is the clubs in between seven iron and in between driver, the blends, like where and when do you blend it? And that's right. Yeah, right yeah you do need help. I, I measured your lofts of your clubs. You need to lie down. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to go grab a five iron and 150 with that shaft. Okay. And uh, what I want to see out of it, I kind of set my goals is I should see 10 miles an hour more ball speed with it, right? So 141, 140, I should see similar land and I should see the same apex. Okay. Once it breaks is when I give you help. Right? You use technology when you need it. Right? Let's see if I need it. Let's do it. That's too high, no? Or no? No? It just looks like a pitching wedge coming out of there when I hit it that high. Nah, we like that. We like that. We like that. All right. Oh, God. A little quick there. But, but again, right? That was user error. Right ball there. speed 142, 140, 140.2. So your ball speed stays super consistent. So that's one of the ones that, yeah, you hit it left, but it's pin high left. Well, that was easy. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I love this 150. I'm not going to lie. So, I mean, if you just look at it, like there's the left one, but that was you, right? That was just your swing. Yeah, we get, it happens. We, yeah, but the land angle stayed at 45, the carry's 211. Your deviation in carry, look at that. That's nuts. With a five. With a five. So from 210 out, you gotta look, I just gotta swing it and it's gonna land within two yards of what I'm trying to do, right? I'll take that. Got Same everything. Anyway, I, don't, I don't change it. I don't give you help until you need it, right? This will be very interesting. Let's see. It's like higher than the five. Yeah, that was good. That felt really good. How do we do? Well, how, no how way. You, you tell me. You got to zoom on that. <laughs> So, five miles an hour more ball speed, right? Land angle 47.7, 48.5, it's excellent. Apex height 116, 114. Nice work. You kidding me right now? So good. Home? Right, it's home. perfect. What do you think the ball speed there is? Good. Unbelievable. Right? Love that. Flat, your flatlining ball speed's at four iron, at five iron, at seven iron now. Every club in your bag just got better. Apex height stayed the same. Land angle stayed the same. Pretty good. It's a little slow, right? Good breaking point. You say a little slow? Well, we want it to be 150, right. and it's 148, yeah, yeah. right? Okay, it's okay, right? Let me hit one more. All Let's right. just verify this thing. I have something. It feels like I can hit it well. It's just not yet. Yeah. This could be my breaking point. It's, yeah, it's broken. Mm. Munched, right? That was good. Are you going to hit it better than that? Well, Let's no, look at it. Probably not. 
so I mean, look, we want to see five miles an hour ball speed separation between each golf club. We're only seeing about 3.6 here when we get down to the three iron. So then you only saw eight, seven, seven, eight yards more of carry. So you have two clubs that are landing within seven, eight yards of each other. Not and ideal. Not ideal, right? So this is where I think we need to give you some help. This is where we have to use technology to our advantage. And so I'm going to make the chassis just a little bit bigger. I'm not too proud. Hit me with it. Try that. So our goals don't really change. This is more my, yeah. my wheelhouse. Kind of rip, but low heel. Yeah. Well, we got your window back, right? Yeah. But I'm a this, little all over the face. It's all right. Here, try this. Don't look at it. Definitely feels better already. Yeah. 152 ball speed there, okay. right? So that's the kind of jump we needed to see. And then we're starting to see a gap now between these two golf clubs, right? We didn't have anything that we got there with. Now, how are you going to use this club on the course, right? Well, like from, are that's you... where I kind of start looking at the bag. Because I go driver through it, those are solidified, definitely up to the four. Yep. So I have one club in there. Yeah. So like this, or zero clubs if I play like the 64 or 60. Yeah. So this would be kind of like that plug and play. Like at the at the open, we saw this a lot because it's a little bit flatter right. than yours. And it's kind of, you know, if you said, hey, I'm just going to hit this ball off the tee. This is my short par four golf club. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 100 feet. So it's not quite that 120. The way we're going to get you to the 120, we're going to try it. We're going to try the next one. And you'll see like a plug and play kind of situation. Like what we've learned today about you is you like heavy? Like Heavy, sit. yeah. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. I sound so bougie. No, it's not. I'm, it's what you like. It's good. Mm. Pretty. Good job. When you start going from irons to woods or mm -hmm. irons to hybrids, that five miles an hour actually turns into 10. You actually want to see 10 in between those two golf clubs. So if you're going driver down a three wood, you want 10? Well, driver three was the only one that's probably, yeah, 10 is probably fair. Okay. I mean, you won't see it too much in driver and three wood because they're used so differently. But if you're comparing a two iron to a three wood, definitely 10. Okay. Right? So 152, 162, right? Okay. So you see the gap where it's starting to fill now. I mean, now you have this set with no holes, right? Now, what I would want to do is build you a two iron for your tighter golf courses, right? When you have to hit a lot of tee balls that are just like really demanding, got to fit it in between two bunkers. Because mm -hmm. I think you'll hit a two iron straighter than you'll hit a hybrid. I actually used to play from a different brand, an 18 degree hybrid driving iron. Oh, yeah. And yes. I loved it. That's what that is. I hit it all the time. Yeah. That, that two iron right there is 17 degrees. Can I hit this again? Yeah. Would this be like the setup? That you'd be thinking about? I, I would like to go weaken it one. Oh, yeah, let me yeah, go weaken it. I'll be right back. I trust you. I'm sure. Slightly thinner. That's right, though. I'm it's curious okay. to see those numbers real quick. 147 ball, so he lost a little there on the thin shot, but it's Not still bad, though. fitting our window. Remember, this is the gap that we're trying to fill. This right? is what we're hitting right here? Yes. Yeah, and there's the skinny one. It fits in really nice, yeah. And you need something in between your three wood and your four iron, right? That'd be a huge gap to try to play golf I with. need something, yeah. I know you'll have a club that carries 223, and then you'll have your three wood that carries 265. What do you do from 235 or 240? It'd be too tough to try to take some take that much off of this golf club, right? You'd be really, oh, yeah. yeah. You'd be fighting really hard to hit this crazy cut or I something. I would just be trying to rip on a four iron. On yeah, that wouldn't yeah. work. Yeah, hit this one more time. That was nice. <laughs> Yes. Woo. Nice work. Woo. Yeah. Good job. So what do you think we would do? We go four up to two? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, really, if you look at it loft-wise, it's not that crazy because we bent this one degree weak. So this is 18 degrees. And then your four iron actually comes in at 22 degrees. 
So it's only a four mm. degree loft separation, even though we're skipping a number. And then because of the length, you know, a two iron is naturally longer than a three iron. So this club on paper will be standard length, even though everything else in your bag is slightly longer. Okay. That makes sense? Well, they weren't what we fit them for in the past, so that's always, you know, concerning when we see it at first. Um, you know, they were two degrees flat. The lengths were a little different. They weren't like a true half inch step in between each golf club. And then the lofts were a little funky when we got down to the four and five iron. Uh, I was curious to how we hit them. You know, looking at specs is one thing. It's kind of gives us a, at least an idea of what they're playing. But until we see the golf ball fly, I mean, they could be right, right? So I always kind of take it with a grain of salt, I guess. He hit them okay. Uh, I thought the spin rates were really low. Uh, with his seven iron when he walked in, you know, being in the mid fives, uh, but it made sense with the loft he had and his strike pattern due to the lie angle that he had. So um, he, he could have hit him better, and I think we, we, uh, we fixed that today during the fitting. I always start them off like having them hit their seven and having them hit their five iron, and then showing them the relationship between their two golf clubs and you know, what a good relationship looks like and what a hostile relationship looks like. And when we got down to his five iron, we saw that his apex heights were lower than his seven iron and the distance separation wasn't really there unless he hit it perfect. So first I always like to start try by finding the head in an iron fitting. So really just matched his shaft up and, and started trying um, some of our different new T-series heads. Uh, we landed on 150 pretty quick. Uh, he hit it very, very well. Um, and then lie angle, we landed on that pretty well. And, and shaft, you know, that was the fun part because, you know, as a fitter, you want to have a, a little bit of input, but shaft really comes down to this, the golfer, right? It's about getting something that feels good, something that, that, that performs well. You know, it's about finding the right length, weight, and flex. And what we learned about Andrew was that he liked heavy uh, and he liked long. So, you know, we seldom go plus half inch, but he walked in a plus half inch and he hit plus half inch the best. So we stayed in a plus half inch. And uh, we did find a ton about the lie angle that, that he fought. Um, you know, you could tell at two degrees flat, he had a lot of toe strikes. And by moving the lie angle back to standard, he started hitting it more consistently in the center of the face. And that's kind of the hierarchy of how you choose lie angle. You know, you choose the lie angle that gives the player the fastest, most consistent ball speed. Um, and then if you have two lie angles doing that, then you can kind of do it for start direction. I think Andrew chose his lie angle in his gamer clubs when he walked in uh, based on a start direction he was after, but really he compromised where he was hitting the ball on the face by doing that. And that's kind of the, the backwards way of, of fitting lie angle. He hit him great right off the bat, right? He, he hit four seven irons in a row and the ball speed deviated less than a half a mile an hour. It was 130, 130, 130, 130. And when you see that, his distance dispersion was less than a yard. And that, that makes it really easy when you see that really tight circle, um, you know, on the TrackMan computer. Um, you know, if Andrew fought anything, he hit it low on the face, like a slightly low strike and T150 with a little bit more tungsten down at the bottom definitely works out with some low, low strike you know, misses. Yeah, so I think the important part of fitting is, is understanding, you know, our three Ds of fitting, which is, you know, distance, dispersion, and descent, right? All I'm trying to do is get every club in Andrew's bag to separate by five miles an hour of ball speed um, for the land angles to match up and then your apex heights to match up. So once we found your seven iron, you know, we hit the five iron, ball speed separated by exactly 10 miles an hour, land angle stayed great, and apex height stayed perfect. Right. Well, that, that job was done. Then we went to four iron and four iron, same thing. Five miles an hour past the five. D uh, descent stayed great and apex height stayed great, stayed great. Now, what I do is I run it until it breaks. Right. I know at, for every golfer, it's going to break somewhere. You know, sometimes it's at the zero iron or the one iron and sometimes it's at the four iron. Uh, in Andrew's case, at the three iron is when it broke his ball speed on his four iron was 145. We went to three iron. It was 147. Right? So even though he was hitting it really well, it only went seven yards further than his four iron. So then in my mind, like this is game on now, I had to give him help. So I started first with the T200 um, utility build. 
right? So I thought maybe giving him a larger chassis with a graphite shaft in a, in a three iron would get him there. And it was close, but I think, you know, Andrew commented on it just being a little loose for him. Um, so then I, and the ball speed still wasn't quite there. So how do we make ball speed faster? Well, we can either make the head bigger or we can make the loft stronger. You know, I just kind of went to the two iron and I went to the two iron at 17 degrees, his four iron was 22 degrees. And then we started seeing the ball speed. Then I started seeing 152, 153, 152, but it was a little flat. Right. Well, he had some ball speed to, to lose there. We were looking for 150. So went inside, bent it a little weak, came out, he hit it, and he loved it. It was right at 151. Apexes went back up. Descents went back up. You know, if you follow our three Ds of fitting and, and, be, and test the long irons, you know, it's the only real way to get fit. You know, there's no, I wish I could tell you the, there's an easy avenue to go. I mean, we have suggestions, but without hitting them, there's no real right answer until you get to see him, you know, ball in the air. Well, I think the first thing is the look, right? They look clean. They look like they all belong. You know, I think Marnie says it well. They're all, they're all the same family now. So blending sets isn't going to be as difficult. And, you know, 80% of our tour players play a blended set of irons. And we find that only 20% of, of club level golfers play a blended set of irons. So I think bridging that gap. Um, telling the story of, of apex heights, distance, dispersion. It makes it easy to blend, and these irons give us those tools to blend now. I think T350 I'm really excited about because it looks like T200, it looks like our line. So being able to have an extra tool to blend. Like for me, I always, have, I always like to have these tools to pull on when I need to, and I felt like 350 wasn't a, a really a tool I used to blend a lot last year. And now when I even have 150 players, now I have really two options to, to blend his set. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to, to blending sets because that's what fitting is. Like fitting isn't, isn't fitting a seven iron. You know, fitting is finding the right five iron, the right four iron. You know, that's where I get excited. I think, uh, you know, that's why I love my job is because every, every patient's different. You know, there's no, there's no two fittings I've ever done where it's the same. And, uh, and you have to just try it and hit it. You know, I'm just really excited for the line and the look and the feel, right? Our feel right now, uh, it's unmatched. I just think every iron feels incredible. And I think something to the, you know, our larger irons having stronger lofts, but the apex staying high and the land angle staying good. You know, land angles is so important to playing good golf. I think sometimes people focus a little too much on total distance and not, you know, our 3Ds, which is descent. Descent is huge. Descent's what makes you play better golf. Yeah, so here we've always been able to do that, but there's been a big push um, using our 3Ds and having the opportunity to get fit with in 5-iron and 4-iron. And this is the first year where we, we are sending out a, a long game fitting pack to our fitting partners. You know, a fitting pack that us fitters here composed for these, you know, stores and locations where you can actually try the 5-iron, try the 4-iron, try the 3-iron, and be able to blend sets differently the right way. You know, I just think fitting... I always say this in my fitting, but it's really easy to fit a seven iron. You know, a seven iron fitting is, is the easiest club in the bag to fit. You know, it's really easy to fit a driver. Like those two North Stars, you can get done down the street from your house and probably get a pretty good job. But to me, that's not fitting. Like fitting is the clubs in between a seven iron and a driver. You know, that's why I love my job. And, and these fitting packs are gonna make it possible for amateurs to have that experience without coming here. It's hard to come here. We're on, we're in Oceanside. If you live in Texas, it's hard to fly to Oceanside, but being able to go down the street to your house and know that you can hit a five iron, you can hit a four iron, and you can look at those three Ds, the descent, dispersion, and distance, and make sure that you're beginning fit for the right club. You know, when someone gets fit for a seven iron and buys seven clubs that they didn't hit, to me, it's just, it's just wild. Like, uh, to me, like, we had to fix that. So we're really, really excited about this long game iron fitting pack that's going out to, you know, our fitting partners. And we, we really think it's going to help uh, make you better. I think Max Homa said this, but every club is an opportunity in your bag to get better. And you can't get better unless you hit them. So we're excited to, to really share this with our team.